Hello, and welcome to another episode. I am Bryant, the unskilled commander. This is another episode of Deck Break It Down. Today, we're going to be looking at my Optimus Prime hero deck. The point of this deck is to try and fixate on Optimus Prime's bolster ability and therefore counters. So he says, at the beginning of each end step, bolster one. Choose a creature from among the ones you have with the least toughness and give it a plus one plus one counter. When he dies, you return it to the battlefield, convert it under its owner's control. So that's really nice because no one, even if a board wipe or targeted destruction, he just flips into his truck mode, which says whenever you attack bolster two, the chosen creature gains trample until end of turn, and when that creature deals combat damage to a player this turn, convert Optimus Prime. So you just flip him back to his robot mode. The only way to really get rid of him is to exile him, which is not hard to do in most commander games, but just the fact that you can't just immediately blow it up with a targeted like destruction spell like murder or something like that does help him keep a, stay around a little bit longer. But like I said, the idea of the deck is to take advantage of his counters. He's going to be bolstering a bunch of creatures every end step, and that's every end step, which means you pass turn, and if you're playing with a normal you know, pot of four... That's three more bolsters past the one you did when you ended your turn. So now, by the time it comes back around to you, you've got four instances of plus one, plus one counters hitting other creatures. Depending on how many you have up, maybe it all goes on the one, maybe they go evenly across four, or whatever. But still, you're ramping up creatures. So let's go ahead and break down the deck and see what we're starting with. We have 36 lands, and there's nothing special in them. I did try to put a lot of artifact lands in there because a couple cards in the deck care about how many artifacts you have so and then I did for flavor I have the Urza set so Urza's tower power plant you know mine so that they buff each other and then I have Karn's Bastion it's probably the only real important card in there because you can pay for it tap it to proliferate so you get Optimus Prime out even if he's got a bunch of tokens out and they're all just one ones and by the time it gets back to you they're now two twos with the counters you can proliferate now they're three threes so there's always like an extra little way to try and ramp up above and beyond Optimus Prime's bolster. Because what you have to realize is, a downside I've found is that every time you play a new creature, it's going to most likely come in with lower power and toughness than everything else in the board. So now that one gets the bolster. So now you have to wait until that one gets up high enough that it's even with what everything else in this, the field before you can start to beef up your bigger characters. So Optimus is very rarely going to bolster himself. Because by the time you get up to 8 toughness, which is what he has game's probably over, or you're winning in some other fashion. Next up, we have enchantments. Now, I only have three enchantments in here, and they're basically all about buffing up the deck. Tempered Steel gives plus two, plus two to artifact creatures. Glorious Anthem gives plus one, plus one to all of your creatures. And then True Conviction, from the Secret Lair uh, Transformers, gives your creatures uh, Double Strike and Lifelink. So even if they are small, with the you know only twos and threes getting the bolster, they're going to have double strike, and they're going to gain you life. So that's really all the enchantments are good for, is just to help even out the playing field, and maybe allow Optimus to bolster somebody different, or more importantly, just give everybody a little bit of a bump. Next up, we've got the artifacts. Obviously, your artifacts, the bulk of them, there are 14. A lot of them are going to be your standard. They're going to be your standard mana fixing. We have a Sapphire Medallion, so blue spells cost one less. Artifacts, you can choose with Cloud Key, Artifacts, Creatures, Enchantments. Whatever they are, they come in, they cost one less to cast, so I can lower my Artifacts. A Locket, you know, your normal Soul Ring and stuff like that. Then there's also a bit of protection in there with the Artifacts. So we've got the Ozolith, which isn't protection, but it focuses on the counters. So whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put them on the Ozolith. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move them from the Ozolith to a target creature. So, let's say, you know, they, you get a good creature going and someone blows it up. You move all those counters onto the Ozolith at the beginning of your, your uh, combat. You move them from the Ozolith onto Optimus Prime. So now you've got commander damage. I've also got some cool, fun stuff in there to try and keep things like defense grid. Each creature costs three more to cast, or each spell costs three more to cast except during its controller's turn, which essentially just means no one's going to be throwing around a lot of spells on other people's steps. You don't have to worry as much about people, oh, on your uh, end step, I'm going to blow up Optimus Prime before he can bolster, or, 
uh, at the beginning of combat, I'm going to blow up your creatures before you can attack with them. Well, it's going to cost you three more to do whatever you're doing. Then we got some really good cards like Unwinding Clock, so untap all artifacts you control during each player's untap. Darksteel Forge, which just makes all your artifacts indestructible. And Dolmen Gate, which I like because prevent all combat damage that we dealt to attacking creatures you control. Which means you can swing out as much as you want, even if they have big blockers, they're not gonna your creatures are not gonna die or take damage, especially if you're trying to use some sort of attack trigger. So if it's like, oh, when this creature attacks, do this, well you need that, you know, you need it, so you attack with it, you don't have to worry with Dolmen Gate out. Next up, we've got seven instances. Instances of instance. We got things like Dramatic Reversal, largely because it's got the awesome, you know, Transformers artwork. But then you've got your normal protection spells. We've got Path to Exile, one of the few Cyclonic Rips I have. You know, and it's it's really all just about protection and answers. So, destruction spells, exiling, artifacts, enchantments, and creatures to try and keep the board state semi under control while you get Optimus Prime's bolster going and get yourself a little Autobot army. Next up, we've got 11 sorceries. Oh, whoops, I almost forgot. I, that was a problem. All will be one is an enchantment, not a sorcery. So that is part of it. So it actually, the numbers change slightly. Four enchantments. Obviously, all will be one is a really new and powerful card. Whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, all will be one deals that much damage to target opponent, creature, and opponent controls, or planeswalker they control. So when Optimus Prime and all will be one out, every single end step, you're pinging somebody for one. And if you get Karn's Bastion, you go ahead and proliferate. Now you're putting more counters, etc. So it's it's about trying to get those counters moving as quickly as possible and then use that for damage. The deck's not built around all for one, but it was a, you know, I think it's a pretty solid include. So now back to the sorceries as we should be. Now that's going to be probably 11 sorceries. And again, these focus about two things, destruction and card draw. That's really all the sorceries are meant for. You've got Fumigate, you know, Ponder for drawing cards, Thoughtcast for drawing cards, Damning Verdict for destruction, things like that. So board wipes to try and clear the field in case someone, especially specific board wipes that are really good for this deck, are destroy all creatures with no counters on them, Damning Verdict, because hopefully all of your creatures will have at least one bolster counter on them. And then Organic Extinction, destroy all non-artifact creatures. Obviously we're about to get to the creatures, but it's mostly a robot-heavy deck. So blow up everything that's not an artifact, you clear the path for your creatures to go on and get through. Finally, we've got the creatures at 28. They're broken up into largely mana, buffs, and utility. The, uh, the concept theme-wise for the deck was Autobots as if the cartoon. So mostly robots with some humans that can help the robots. As opposed to like your movie versions where it's like focusing on the stupid humans and you hardly get the robots fighting or anything. But you've got your, your standard MERS, you know, that tap for colors or colorless, just to try and help ramp up, things like that. You've got a lot of vehicles. I have the vehicles in the count, the creatures. I know technically the vehicles count as artifacts because they're not a creature until you crew them, but whatever. But you've got some good ones like Peace Walker, Peace Walker Colossus. Walking Skyscraper is a normal just creature, and I love it because I, can, I consider that Metroplex from... Um, Transformers lore. Then you've got some really standard, obviously I have the awesome Optimus Prime Darksteel Colossus version from the Secret Lair. However, it's an 11 drop 11-11 with Trample and Indestructible, but he rarely comes out because he's so expensive to get on the field. Some other key good creatures in the deck, of course, Lita Mechanic Engineer. To begin of your end step, untap each other artifact creature you control. Kind of gives them a late game or late stage uh, vigilance, if you will. Obviously, we got your reducers, like artifact spells cost one less to cast thanks to Illyrian Sculptor, Foundry Inspector, Alibu Ancient Witness gives you all of your artifact creatures haste, a little bit of a buff with Master of Elithium, all of the artifact creatures get plus one, plus one. And for humans, you got some things like Hannah Ship's Navigator, Asben, Battle Priest, things like that to try. And again, the humans in the deck need to help the artifact creatures in some way. If they just work on themselves, they're not good enough, they're not important. The, the idea was to get a few in there that either buff all creatures or do whatever or you know, help. Because they're mainly there to crew the vehicles and do whatever little be part of the deck that to benefit the Autobots. Unfortunately, I actually did take out a lot of the actual Autobots. 
that came out in the Brothers War set because while they're really good and they're all legendary creatures, so they'd probably be good for their own decks, it ended up that they weren't really synergizing with the rest of the creatures and, and bringing anything to the concept of the deck, which is disappointing because the whole crux of why I built it was because I wanted Optimus to lead all of the Autobots. And, of course, there's a few that don't fit in the deck because of colors that are, like, green or black, but it was a little disheartening to take out RC and Prowl and all them, but I really had to get... In order to make the deck be decent, I had to take them out to get some better vehicles and humans in there that would benefit the entire board state. But there you have it. That's my Optimus Prime Autobots rollout deck. Hope you saw some cool cards and got some ideas for your own things. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You know, Throw down some likes along the way. Let's check out the rest of my videos. And I will see you next time.